Amen. <clears throat> John chapter 19. <laughs> Not that John, this John. <clears throat> John chapter 19 and verse 31. In many ways, we come to this passage and we start off a teaching in John 19, 31 in almost an underwhelming environment. You see, everything has been done. Everything is completed. The verse previous, Jesus has said, it is finished. It is finished. And we could well sit there for weeks basking in what Christ has done. It is finished. It is finished. And so as we come to this passage, we've got a lot to learn through it. But it's almost in a, it's almost in a sense of, wow, the, the, the passion, the passion is, is, is largely over. The job has been completed on the cross. And what is it that the, that the word of the Lord, what is it that the Lord has to say to us even this morning? So verse 31, we pick it up and it says, Therefore, because it was the preparation day, that the bodies should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that the legs, that their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. You know, we read over that. Mm. We read over that. There's a few things going on here. The Pharisees, <laughs> these legal Jews, have murdered a man. They falsely accused a man and they've put him to death. Not just a man, but the son of man. They have falsely accused and murdered the Messiah. Jesus saying it is finished, bowing his head. Them not recognizing perhaps that he, is, uh, that he is actually dead. Perhaps they did, perhaps they didn't. The Bible doesn't give us enough to know what they were thinking. But they've now gone to Pilate and asked that their legs should be broken so that they would quickly die, so that they could be taken off the cross and so that they didn't have to pollute the scenery on this high day, which was the Sabbath. You know, as I read that and I read that and I read that, <clears throat> Proverbs 30 verse 20 came to mind and I'm going to paraphrase it but you're welcome to go and have a look at it Proverbs 30 verse 20 and it speaks about this an adulterous woman um, it speaks about this uh, this adulterous person and it says she she eats wipes her mouth and says I've done no wrong and that's exactly what they've done that's exactly what they've done they've murdered an innocent man but now because Christmas is the next day, and it's not Christmas, but you get the, you get the idea. Because they've got this big celebration the next day. Mm -hmm. We don't want to see these ugly things anymore. <laughs> we wanted him brutalized. We wanted him mocked. We wanted him spat on. We wanted him beaten. We wanted him crucified. Now we want to get rid of him. Now we don't want to know about him. Wipe the mouth and we're done with him. The goal, the goal of it. Why? Because the next day was a high day. You've just murdered a man. But we don't want him polluting the scenery. We want him to be taken down. We, we don't want to come in contact with him. You see, if you came in contact with him, you were the most defiled you could be if you come in contact with a dead body. You're the most defiled you could be. You'd miss all the festivities. Um, a lot of people would use this text to say that Jesus was crucified on a Thursday, which was the Passover, the next day then being the first day of first fruits, which was always a high Sabbath. The day after that would have been Saturday, which would have been a Sabbath starting on Friday night. And therefore the first day of the week being Sunday, Jesus would have been in the grave for three days and three nights. There's all sorts of fights and conjecture in and around the exact timing of those things. It does seem from this text that that's the way that it's worked out. It was the preparation day before the high day, which was the first day of the festival of first fruits. But they've asked that their legs might be broken. And last week, because John didn't go into any detail, I didn't go into detail. This week, John hasn't gone into severe detail about it, but he has asked, um, or has recorded, that their, that their legs be broken. Verse 32, we see that the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other that was crucified with him. And we read over that. And, and away we go. But here are these men who've perhaps been scourged. We don't, uh, we, we, we don't have a record in the Bible that the other men had been scourged, but that was what the Romans would, would have done. 
They would have been scourged. They would have been whipped and flogged and their backs ripped open. They would have been crucified on the cross. They would be on the cross for the last six hours. And here comes a soldier with a club. And, and, and again, history is going to tell us that they had these big wooden clubs, but perhaps even an iron pole. And they were going to break their legs. The reason why they would do that, and again, I don't mean to be uh, overly graphic with these things, but the reason why they would do that is because with your arms outstretched, you would be slumped down. And when you're slumped down, you can't breathe with your entire weight on your chest. And so you would push up and you would grab a breath and then you would slump back down again because obviously pushing up on the spike, which is through your legs and on your arms, through the nerves in your wrists, excruciating just to breathe. This was a mercy in many ways. Mm -hmm. But when they broke your legs, you couldn't push up anymore. And if you couldn't push up anymore, you would remain in the slumped position. And in that slumped position, you would ultimately drown. You would ultimately choke to death and you would drown. In Luke 23, verse 43, in Luke 23, verse 43, Jesus turned and looked to one of those thieves. And he said, today you will be with me in paradise. And that dude's watching a guy with a mallet coming towards him. Mm -hmm. Today, you will be with me in paradise. There was a consequence for that man's action. Mm -hmm. And Jesus didn't take that consequence away. You see, Jesus gave that man hope in Luke 23, 43. Jesus gave that man what, what you and I can't. We could perhaps give him physical mercy. We could go up onto the cross with a crowbar or whatever it takes, and we could have pulled him off and patched him up, and that may have been merciful. But if he died a second death without Christ, that would have been the worst thing we could have possibly done for him. He was going to suffer greatly. And I, I put myself in that position because, Lord, don't you love me? <laughs> Lord, these things which are happening... This guy on the cross, you've just said, I'm going to be with you in paradise. And here they come. They're coming to break my legs. Think about this. I don't know if you've ever broken a bone. I've broken plenty of bones. It was because of large impact. This is, this is brutal. It's a mercy in many ways because they're not going to die. But it is brutal. And there's an important lesson for us. There's a really important lesson for us that... Christ has paid for what matters more than anything else in this world. He has earned our entrance into eternity. Our sins are paid for. We are absolutely forgiven, made pure, His righteousness on us. And we have home. We have a place in the throne room of God. We belong in the throne room of God clothed in the righteousness of Christ. In this world, we will have tribulations. And I don't mean the breaking of legs to be an encouragement, but that's what it stands here as. This man was no less saved because he was seeing the fulfillment of the outworking of his sins. You and I perhaps have done stuff and we have consequences. Jesus doesn't always take those consequences away, but you're no less loved by him when you go through trials and difficulty, this man had great assurance. He was going to be with Jesus in paradise. If for a moment there was going to be great suffering. I put myself in his place and said, would I have looked any different to the other thief that wasn't saved? And in the physical, I'm not sure that I would have looked much different. I think I would have been screaming and I pray there'd be less swearing. I'm pretty sure the other guy was going wild because here they came. Um, to break his legs and ultimately to put him out. It was a mercy, as I've said, but what a cruel, what a cruel, horrible mercy that is. So the soldiers came and they broke the legs of the first. Jesus was in the middle. So you have to picture the scene. They came along, they break the legs of the first. He slumps because he now can't get up. And any time he tries, he can't because his legs are now broken. So he slumps and will ultimately slow to a point where he then ceases to breathe. And they, because they're Roman soldiers, will know that he's dead. Mm -hmm. They look at Jesus and he's already assumed that position. His body's already in that position. He's dead. And it's obvious to them. They skip over him mm -hmm. and they move to the next one and they break the next one's legs. Mm -hmm. But when they came back to Jesus, when they came to Jesus, it says, 
and they saw that he was already dead, dead. They did not break his legs. They did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water mm. came out. One of them pierced his side with a spear, and you know what? We see these pictures, and if you drive down the main road, there's that crucifix up on the Catholic building, and it looks, you know, it looks quite neat. A Roman spear piercing your side. That Thomas, in verse 25 of chapter 20, if you turn a page, verse 25, of, of chapter 20 in John. The other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see his hands, the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. This wasn't, a, this wasn't the sheep goat. Right? This wasn't a prick him to see if he's going to jump. And if he jumps, he's not dead. Then we need to break his legs. That's not what they did. And I don't mean to make light of that at all. But that's not what they did. They didn't prick him. They ran him up into the heart. They ran him up into the heart with a Roman spear, which you can go and Google if you want. Perhaps a hand's width sharpened at the front. So much so that Thomas would be able to put his hand up into Jesus' side. They thrust him into his heart. So you take your hand, which is perhaps what Thomas would have put into his side, and you put that anywhere on your chest, right? There's damage there. Try, try and make this, make this real for yourself. They poked him up into his heart. They ran him through with that spear. And we're going to ask the question in a minute, why did they do that? Why did they do that? You see, the other two, they broke their legs. But once they had broken their legs and they fell into the same slumped position that Christ was in, they didn't spear them because they recognized that they were dead. Christ was dead. These people were, were accustomed to death. They knew what death was. He was dead. His body was dead on the cross. There was no reason. There was no reason to run him through with a spear. And there was no reason particularly because they didn't do it to the other two either. There's no record that they did that to the other two. So why is it that these things have come to pass? John tells us in verse 35 that he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true, and he knows that he's telling the truth so that you may believe. John says, I am an eyewitness of these events. I am an eyewitness who are recording this directly in first hand. This is what happened. He's recorded to us that blood and water came, came out. And you can go and look at the medical studies on those. What happens to a heart when, uh, um, when ultimately it's, uh, um, uh, your heart would burst in, in, in a sense. And blood and water would, would collect in the pericardium around the heart. They were aiming for his heart. When you pierce somebody in the side... That, that, that's, the, that's the idea. You're going for the vitals, lungs and hearts and those kinds of things. Blood and water would have come out. There's a beautiful analogy of how out of Adam's side, a rib woman was, was created. And out of the side of Jesus, uh, freedom, yeah, forgiveness, yeah. the blood of Christ ultimately um, was, was given to us. Um, that a new man could be created, a new woman could be created, a new human race in so many ways can be created because of the sacrifice of Jesus. Verse 36 is key to us. We have an eyewitness account that these things are true. We can see the strange behavior of these people, strange behavior of these Roman soldiers. Now, even that, even that spear business, and I don't mean to get graphic again, but that spear business is messy. Breaking somebody's legs is, is horrific, but it's not quite as messy as up into the up into the heart and blood and water and whatnot coming out. That and and again, I don't mean to be crass in any way, but this guy had some washing to do after that activity. Why did he do that? Why did he do that? I wouldn't have done that. Let's try put yourself in that position. You wouldn't have done that. Why did these things happen this way? It doesn't make any sense. But verse thirty six is the key. For these things were done that the scriptures should be fulfilled. These people were doing exactly what God said that they would do. They're responsible for it. They chose to do it. 
They're going to bear the consequence and the responsibility for their actions as you and I with free will do. But God in his foreknowledge knew that this was going to happen and therefore prophesied through the word that this was going to happen. These things happened that the scriptures should be fulfilled, that not one of his bones should be broken. Now we know from Exodus 12, 46, from Numbers 9, 12, even from Psalm 34, verse 20, we know that not a bone of the Passover lamb was to be broken. And Jesus is that Passover lamb. The Passover and the whole sacrificial system, all of it points to Jesus, who absolutely fulfilled it on the cross. Not a bone of his shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, they shall look on him who they pierced. Why did they run that spear up into his side, up into his heart? Why did they do that? Why did they go through that extra effort and difficulty and, 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 and gruesomeness in so many ways? Why did that soldier do it? Because God said he was going to. <laughs> Why did he do it? Because God said he was going to. Zechariah 12 verse 10. They will look upon him whom they have pierced. And they've pierced him. They've pierced him for our transgressions. He was pierced for our iniquities. God laid his wrath upon Christ and we are recipients of his grace and mercy in that transaction. What does this mean for you and I? Well, turn with me through to Isaiah chapter 45, verse 22. Let's have a look at some prophecy. Isaiah 45, verse 22. <clears throat> look to me and be saved. All you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. All roads lead to God. No, they don't. God, Yahweh God, the God of the Bible, the creator God, the designer, creator and sustainer of the universe, the God head of the Trinity, along with the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ himself. That God, he is God and there is no other. I'm sorry to offend you. You have open access to this God. You have open access to the designer, creator, and sustainer of the universe through Christ and through Christ alone. You have access. It's free and open to everyone. But no, all roads do not lead to God. There is one way, and he is God, and he is the only God. Every other God is false. That's unpopular, and I'm not sorry. Because the Bible's not. It's unapologetic about the fact that he is the only God. Have a look at that. Look to me and be saved. A picture of Christ and we'll see that now. All you ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. I have sworn by myself. The word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness. Because that's all that God is. He's absolutely righteous. He can only speak in righteousness. And it shall not return. That to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall take an oath. Every tongue shall confess, we know because of the song. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall take an oath. He shall say, surely in the Lord I have righteousness and strength. To him men shall come and all shall be ashamed who are incensed against him in the Lord all the descendants of Israel shall be justified and shall glory what an incredible promise why is it that the other's legs were broken and Jesus's wasn't because the scriptures foretold it why is it that Christ was pierced unnecessarily why because the scriptures foretold it what does Isaiah tell us every knee will bow every tongue will confess. And you and I have the opportunity to do that now. The knowledge of God is eternal life. We have the ability to enter now into eternal life. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess, ultimately. How does that play out in the New Testament? Well, we see that in, um, in, in Romans, Romans chapter 14. But turn with me past Romans chapter 14 and get into Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. So Paul's told in Romans 14, basically quoted Isaiah 45. But here he does again to the Philippians. And from verse 5 in chapter 2, it said, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, 
did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. What it's saying is he knew that he was God. Mm -hmm. And he didn't consider that to be something strange or weird because he always was God. He never put away the fact that he was God. But he made himself of no reputation. God made himself of no reputation, taking on the form of a bondservant, a slave, and coming in the likeness of men. Mm -hmm. And being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even yeah. death on the cross. Therefore, because of this, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. And here it comes, that at the name of Jesus, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on the earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Friends, this is going to happen. Yeah. This is going to happen. If we know that this is going to happen, and, and, and this isn't the only promise in Scripture, that's the good news. We've got lots and lots mm. of promises in Scripture, and every single one of them is perfect, and every single one of them is true. Every single one of them is going to happen. Why? Because God said so. It's that simple. It's that simple. I do that with my kids. Why? Because I said so. Well, it's this simple with the Word of God. God said so. Why did they not break Jesus' legs? God said so. Why did they pierce him up the side? God said so. Why did they bury him in a rich man's tomb? We're going to see that now. Because God said so. Because God said so. And you know what? God has spoken to us and He's spoken to us through His Word. You want to know what God said? Do you want to have God speak into your life? Get into the Word. Know God's Word. Allow Him to speak these things into your life. And when I say speak them into your life, I'm not talking in some strange name it and claim it sense. I'm saying allow the Word of God to permeate into your heart and hang on to the truth of the Word of God. Because it changes everything. What are you afraid of? Nothing. Nothing. Does that mean that we're invincible? No. Yeah. But it means that we're free. Why? Because our eternity, and that's eternity, that's forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Our, our, our forever, our eternity is secure. We don't always act that way, do we? <laughs> that thief on the cross, I guarantee you, he didn't act that way when they came at him with the mallet. I wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. And yet that truth is, is, is there for us. That peace that passes understanding is there for us if we would just if we would just rest in it i hesitate to say claim it because that, uh, that that gets that gets weird quite quickly but if we would just rest in the promises of god man verse 38 after this so after these things have played out exactly according to the way that god said they would after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he may take away the body of Jesus. Why did he want to take away the body of Jesus? Well, what would happen, and this again is slightly graphic, but what would happen is these guys would be turfed out onto the rubbish heap. Hmm. They'd be turfed into the bin. Hmm. Gehenna, we, we have that, that word Gehenna. There was that rubbish heap outside Jerusalem. They would throw them into a rubbish heap. There was no glory, there was no, there was no burial, there was, there was no, they would throw them out. The Romans would often leave the bodies on the cross for the wild animals to come and pick at. Sure. To leave, of course the cross was, was an instrument of Rome to quell nationalism. Nobody wanted to be crucified. If you were Roman, you couldn't be crucified. It was that disgusting. They would leave them on the cross. If you were taken off the cross, you were thrown in the bin. You were just discarded into the rubbish heap. Joseph of Arimathea wanted to bury Jesus. He wanted to honor Jesus. Perhaps he wanted to honor Jesus like he realized he should have while Jesus was alive. But he wanted to honor Jesus. Why is that important for us? Why is it important that Jesus should be buried? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul gives us the gospel. He says from verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which you also received, and in which you stand, by which you are saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you first 
of that which I also received. And I love it when Paul says that, and that's what we should all be doing, delivering only what we've received from truth, not spreading what we think are opinions and lies and gossips, but what we have received and the only point of truth that we can receive anything from is the word of God. And Paul has done that. He's received from the Lord. He's now delivering to them that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Well, didn't Paul have this Jesus epiphany? Didn't he have this, this Jesus incarnation? And didn't Jesus teach him all these things? Jesus showed up in a big way in Paul's life. Jesus miraculously spoke into Paul's life and changed him. Paul went off preaching, was lowered down the wall in a basket and ran back to Tarsus for four, for three years, where he then spent those three years relearning the Old Testament in context of Jesus. He saw Jesus in the scriptures and he saw that Jesus, this is what he's received from the Lord through the scriptures. He saw that Jesus died according to the scriptures for our sins and that he was buried and that he rose again according to the scriptures why is it important that he was buried christ could have come off the cross once it was completed but jesus himself had said no sign will be given you except the sign of jonah who for three days and three nights was in the belly of the earth was jesus going to tell us that and then do something else no absolutely wasn't we, we know as well from Psalm 16 verse 10 that, that the Lord would not allow his Holy One to see corruption. He would not get to a point of decay, which generally happens after three days. Mm. That wouldn't start. Why? Because God said so, but he was going to be buried. He is a high priest, and I'm not going to go there now, but Hebrews 4 verse 14, we've got this high priest who relates to us. We've got this high priest that even in our death, he can say to us, don't worry, I know. I know that crossing over even that body which is buried I know I know and it's okay you can trust me I've been there you see none of us have done death before no? and I'm dubious of those guys who say they have and wrote books and made millions out of it none of us have done death before but Jesus has and he's conquered it and he can say to you and I he's the only one that can say to you and I it's okay it's okay I've been there and I can help you through this. What a great, what a great consolation. So Pilate gave him permission. So he came and he took the body of Jesus. And again, we read that. He came and took the body of Jesus. He has this rich guy who's got nothing else to do. So I'm going to take down the body of Jesus. And maybe I'll get a servant to help because it's kind of eh. And, and we're going to bury him. And maybe I'll get into the Bible. And that's not what happened here. That's not what happened here. Joseph's heart was moved massive compassion and understanding that this was the Christ and wanted to honor him in his death so much so that even Nicodemus Nick at night who uh, who was also afraid of the Jews would also come out and he would help and he would bring um, the myrrh and the aloes about a hundred pounds the Bible tells us in the next verse 39 but they came and took the body of Jesus and again like the like the breaking of the legs we read over that okay that's cool they came and took the body of Jesus if you considered what it takes to keep a man pinned to a cross you can go and Google these things as well. But again, we've used our hands today. So have a look at your pinky. Mm -hmm. uh, that was perhaps what the spike, and it wasn't a nail. It wasn't a nicely rounded piece of wire nail. Perhaps it was that spike, the, the thickness of your pinky, and perhaps it was the length of your hand, somewhere between 10 and 15 centimeters, driven with a head on it, maybe like a five rand coin, because it's got to keep you on that cross, mm -hmm. driven through into the wood through the hands and through the feet. How do you get those out? <laughs> have, have we considered these things? Here, here's, a, here's a devotion and a work. A work. I've been so mulling over this thing. It is finished, so work. It is finished, so get to work. That, that, seems almost, that seems almost opposite. We saw from last week in Haggai chapter 2, verse 4. The Lord is with you. Work hard because God is with you. Not so that he will be with you. Not so that you'll have his favor, but because he is with you. Jesus says it is finished. It, the work had only just started for Joseph. You see, in the light of what had just happened... He didn't care if he couldn't trade anymore. He didn't care if he was going to be put out of the synagogue. He didn't care what those consequences are. He was going to honor Jesus. And he went to work to do it. He and Nicodemus, and it says it was them, not their servants, which they had many of. 
they were rich men and that's exactly mm. what would have happened in the culture so it's a very good assumption to make yet it is assumption but they would have taken Jesus down from the cross they would have had to pull those nails out of his hand you couldn't get him off the cross mm. they would have pulled the nails out of his feet Nicodemus came verse 9 39 says who first came to Jesus at night, he also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. Then they took the body of Jesus and they bound it in strips of linen with the spices as the custom of the Jews is to bury. And so I went and had a look at as the custom of the Jews is to bury. And even today, there's a very, very beautiful custom of the Jews to bury. You see, they wash the body down, they remove all foreign objects. And as they're doing it, there's prayers that they'd be reciting. There is, a, there is an honoring and what they're doing is the ultimate, the, the ultimate service because the person that you're doing it for is unable to repay you. Yeah. The ultimate service is to that one who's unable to repay you in any way. And that's what they were doing with Jesus. They took him down, the, the, the lacerated back, the, the holes in the hands and in the feet, the thorn of crowns which they would have to remove gently and gently and methodically and lovingly and with all modesty which he hadn't had up on the cross which is again when you go and look through the process of the jews they would have washed him down they would have removed all of these foreign objects and items they would have um, they would have clothed him in linen which was what the high priest needed to go into the holy of holies with he couldn't go in with all his fancy god when he went before before the Lord you go you go in linen you go in plain linen and even the Jews today are buried in plain linen to signify that everybody's equal at their death before God mm -hmm. everybody's absolutely equal there's no fancy things which go through many of them um, have simple wooden coffins and, and those kinds of things even pine with no nails um, a beautiful beautiful picture but they washed him they bound him and verse 41 now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden well that's that's fortuitous isn't it now in, now in the place where he was crucified, there is a garden. Mm. And in that garden, there was a new tomb in which no one had been laid. Mm. A tomb, obviously, a, a rich man's burial place. Mm. But isn't that good luck? Mm -hmm. Isn't that a great coincidence yeah. that, that right close by to where Jesus was, there is this tomb? Mm. Even better luck that it's owned by the guy who's just taken Jesus off the cross. Oh, how, how wonderful is that? Man, it's great when the universe helps God out, isn't it? These coincidences. Or is this again an absolute fact that because Scripture said in Isaiah 53 verse 9, because God said that he was going to be buried with the rich, he was going to have a rich burial, that's why this happened. That's why it happened at Golgotha. It was outside of the city, again, in, in, uh, in, in accordance with, with how the sacrifices would take place, because Jesus is our sacrificial lamb. But there happened to be this, uh, th this particular tomb in this particular garden where Joseph, who built up the courage to come and ask for this body, which would have had huge consequences for him, to prepare the body and to put it in the tomb. And so verse 42, there they laid Jesus because the Jews, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the tomb was nearby. Perhaps to them, perhaps to them, it was the tomb is nearby. That's what the Bible records. The tomb was nearby. This makes perfect sense. Didn't consider for a minute Isaiah 53 verse 9. They didn't consider that this was God's hand at work. And I think in many ways, perhaps they missed out because of that. And, and we'll see continuing on. Christ raises from the dead. For those who are going to watch this and don't know the end of the story, I'm going to spoil it. Christ is going to raise. And we're going to see that in the next few verses. But perhaps that's next week. What's important for us is that we can trust the word of the Lord. Because we've seen it proven true time and time and time again. He said there's over 70 prophecies fulfilled by Christ on the cross alone. In this Passion Week, in this cross uh, picture, over 70 prophecies. That's impossible. You know how these things work. If, um, if, if one in ten men are bald, then if you put ten men in a room, you've got a one in ten chance. Mm. Right? But if one in ten men wear glasses, 
and you want to find that one in ten that is bald. I'm sorry, I'm making a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that is bald and wearing glasses. All of a sudden, your your percentages drop quite a lot, don't they? Mm. And if one in a hundred people have one sh one one foot that's longer than the other. Uh, your, your percentages drop again, that's three prophecies. What if you've got uh, uh, one finger missing and uh, one ear slightly lower than the other? What if there's 353 prophecies in the Bible fulfilled by Jesus? Mm -hmm. What if? What if there's 10? You can't match that if there's 10. Yeah. You can't match that if there's 20. You can't match that if there's 100. You can't come close to it if there's 300. And I believe all 353, but we can argue about 50 of them if you want. We'll go with 300. We'll go with 200. I still win. <laughs> this is the truth. This is the truth. Jesus is who he says he is. Prophecy has proved it. So how does that apply to you and I? How does that, how does that come home to us? What has Jesus told you through the scriptures? What has God given you through the scriptures? And I didn't ask what some fancy guy on the television told you, God has told you. What did God tell you? Because he's going to speak to you and he's never going to tell you anything that's different to his word. But he needs to tell it to you. You need to take that and live it because it's true. Because it's true. One day every tongue will confess. One day every knee will bow. And that's the baseline. There are incredible promises when we confess Jesus now. <laughs> When we confess him as Lord, we might still have our legs broken, but we have incredible promises. We have incredible promises in Jesus, and every single one is yes and amen, because he's never failed. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your incredible and perfect word, Lord, that you've given to us as, a, as an absolute proof. Lord, the most studied, the most debated, the most pulled apart text that the world has ever known, and it stands up. It stands up because it's your word. And Lord, we don't, we don't worship your word, we worship you, but your, yeah. word, your word reveals you to us. Lord, it's through this that we know you, your character. It's through this that we understand the working of the Holy Spirit. It's through this that we see Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's through this that we have life eternal and joy unspeakable because of what you've done for us lord and i pray father that we would grab hold of this i pray lord that we would search you lord and that we would find you we know father because you've told us that you are seeking those yeah. who are seeking you lord give us hearts which are hungry for you to know you Lord, even if there's an element of human selfishness that we just want to be comforted by you lord we know that's okay because you love us and you want to comfort us Father, give us this assurance, give us this joy, give us the ability, Father, to share it with those around us. Lord, we know that this is the gospel because it's according to the scriptures, the good news of a new covenant by the blood of Jesus, that by faith we should enter into relationship with you, as Abraham did. By faith he entered in, as the patriarchs did. By faith they would enter in, and by faith in Christ, Lord, we say yes and amen to what you've done for us. We thank you for the promises that you've made to us. Lord, I pray that we wouldn't take them and carnalize them. Lord, I pray we wouldn't take them and make ourselves comfortable with them, Lord. But we would take them and we would steal ourselves for this battle. Lord, that we would do the things that we have to do for you, Lord. The things that you've prepared for us and the strength that you give us with the most perfect assurance that you are good, that you love us, and that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But Lord, that may not always work out perfectly well for us in our own comfortable mind, uh, mind space and thought. And so, Father, we just pray that, uh, that you would uh, remove anxiety, remove fear, Lord, remove any doubt, and that you'd work in our lives to bring us to a place that you would have us. And ultimately, Lord, that we would see Jesus, Lord, that we would know you and we know that this is eternal life. And so we pray, Father, that uh, as, we, uh, as we seek you this week, that you'd be found of us. We pray that as we walk out in this world, Lord, you would go before us and behind us lord that your word would be a lamp to our path and a light to our feet and that father we would uh, we would walk in the things that you prepared for us that you would bring us back together another week lord if you tarry we ask it all in the name above all names in jesus name we ask amen, amen.